Welcome back to another video. I am Scott with Techno Eclipse, and in today's video, I'm going to talk about my eGPU setup one week later. Should you do it? Shouldn't you do it? Should you tell that girl you love her, or should you break up with your girlfriend? All in today's video, I'm gonna save your marriage too. All of those. So as you know, I purchased an eGPU about two weeks ago. For those of you who don't know what an eGPU is, it is essentially a box that you can plug a desktop grade graphics card into, connect that box with your computer, in this case it's a MacBook Pro, and then run a display cable from that eGPU back into a different external display and you'll get similar performance to a desktop. You lose about 20% performance, but it's still pretty good, especially considering all of the little kind of hacks you have to do. So I'm gonna tell you the good, bad, and everything in between. To start, let's go with the good. There are a lot of good. So in this case, with my computer, I have a late 2013 MacBook Pro. It's got an i7 4960HQ, 16 gigs of RAM, da 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 da. It has originally a GT 750M graphics card inside of it. That's a very lousy GPU. But inside of that eGPU, I have a GTX 780, which is an older card, obviously, at this point point it's about five years old but it was the second most powerful card five years ago and it's similar to about a 1060 in today's performance which makes it a very viable option for people who want to do this the main reason is because the 7 series cards are supported by mac os natively because inside of this macbook pro as mentioned before it's got a gt 750m those are built in the same architecture which allows the gtx 780 to work natively the only other graphics cards i would use for this setup if you really want to use it in Mac OS are the 7 series GTX cards or you could go with the 4 series or 5 series AMD cards that are built on the Polaris architecture. You get that. You get good performance. You get a beefy graphics card. In my case, the most powerful graphics card I've ever used. I had a 1060 but I believe the 780 is just slightly more powerful and it's been awesome. I've been able to game City Skylines at 1440p and it hasn't really been dropping too many frames. It's not a super intensive game, but it definitely pushes the system. I could hear the fans on the MacBook Pro speed up and the eGPU gets quite warm when you are playing a game. So there's that to keep in mind. The next benefit is my export times on Adobe Premiere Pro on Mac OS. The same file was 12 minutes and 13 seconds to export that file and then when i have the egpu plugged in it was about four minutes and 30 seconds it was like four minutes and 28 or four minutes and 32 i can't remember which one so export times have decreased substantially having the cuda cores really really help in export times on adobe premiere pro and it really has made a difference in some cases, but I, there is a slight problem that I'll go into later. And the next biggest benefit is along with being able to game on it comfortably with most modern titles at at least 1080p at 60 frames per second, I've really noticed that when running Windows, not that the whole operating system runs better, but it's nice not having to only push the macbook pro the cooling when using it for gaming it the fans pick up noticeably they pretty much almost run at full speed the whole time it can be kind of loud but when just using the operating system just to go you know look at the internet just to browse the web it's a very quiet experience and it's something that i've really enjoyed it's nice to know you have that extra horsepower in case you do need to do any rendering or gaming and it's really nice to have because at any moment I can unplug this laptop, go into bed, go upstairs, go outside, and I can still use the laptop. It won't have the same performance with the graphics card, but it still gets pretty solid performance on the CPU side, and that's really, really nice for me. I do get that one computer setup. I don't have to fiddle between having a gaming desktop and then using the MacBook Pro. That just gets too expensive for me, but too expensive and not too expensive. We'll have to go into that a little bit later. <laughs> and for the most part, I've really, really enjoyed it. There have been a couple of bugs and that's pretty much all of the good I have to say about it. There's a lot of good with it. It's been really fun. I've really enjoyed using it, but there are certainly some negatives to the eGPU setup. The first one is price. <laughs> Obviously, this MacBook Pro cost me $600. That's an amazing deal. Not something you're going to find every day. The eGPU enclosure cost me 150 bucks. Again, that was a really good deal, something you're probably not going to find every single day. The GPU cost me 80 bucks. Again, a really solid deal for a 780 at the time. It's still a solid deal. That's probably about a $100 graphics card. It draws a lot of power and runs really hot. 
the reason it's not super expensive right now, but it's still a powerful graphics card nonetheless. And the next cost was just the cables. In order to be able to get this to work, you have a Thunderbolt 3 enabled eGPU, which has a USB Type-C form factor. Apple sells a cable that converts the Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 2, so you can th plug that adapter into the eGPU, plug a Thunderbolt 2 cable into the back of the adapter, and then plug the other end of the Thunderbolt 2 cable into your MacBook Pro, thus giving you that eGPU experience. Those two cables were 70 bucks for two cables that are the size of my forearm. It's ridiculous they're not much cheaper elsewhere i looked even on ebay i could i probably could have saved like five bucks but i bought them at best buy they were refurbished they were just basically returns and the thunderbolt 2 to thunderbolt 3 was 40 bucks and then the thunderbolt 2 to thunderbolt 2 was like 25 and then there's tax 70 bucks so it's kind of expensive when you add that all together that's 900 bucks for this computer and there are a lot of computers that I could have bought even on the Windows side, not that run Mac OS, but on the Windows side that I could have bought that would have checked all of the marks and I wouldn't have even needed an eGPU. I probably could have got a 7700 HQ and then maybe like a GTX 1070 or at least a 1060 inside of that computer with either like a 1080p or 4K screen, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 500 gigabytes of storage for about the same price. But keeping this in mind, that eGPU will be good for any computer coming out probably in the next three or four years because it's Thunderbolt 3 enabled. So whenever I upgrade this MacBook Pro, I will be able to use that eGPU in the future. The next negative is getting it to work. So booting into Windows is an absolute dream. It's amazing. It really, I, all I had to do was download the drivers and it worked right away. Windows is great for that. Windows is meant to run on a lot of things. That's what makes Windows such a special operating system booting into Windows on this computer is a dream. I know every single time I boot into it, it's gonna work. It's gonna work exactly how I intend it to work. I've noticed that the internal display on the MacBook Pro can kind of be a little bit laggy sometimes. The only time I've noticed it was laggy was actually when I was playing a game and I was watching a YouTube video on the other screen. I think that was more graphics card problems and CPU problems than actually pumping the graphics card display power back into the MacBook Pro, I believe, but I haven't noticed that problem when not gaming, so that's why I think that happened. Booting into Mac OS is a totally different story. It's tricky to get it to work. Apple released an update 10.13.4. Mac OS High Sierra, <laughs> the fourth edition of it essentially. It gave really good support for Thunderbolt 3 enabled eGPUs, but it basically gave a middle finger to anybody using a Thunderbolt 2 enabled and Thunderbolt 1 enabled eGPU setup. It sucks, but there are a bunch of patches around it that are free and you can get it to work. Currently I'm running Mac OS right now, but if you look behind me, the eGPU is connected to the external display and it is also not working inside the internal display. And you can see that the internal display believes it's nighttime and the external display believes it's daytime and it is daytime. So I'm not sure what that glitch is. I haven't disabled the integrated graphics card yet. I know I will have to do that. And I think that's the biggest problem, but there is that it's finicky. Premiere Pro, the first time I got it to work, really really well the first time i booted into mac os i got it to work beautifully everything was working perfect no problems with it but using premiere pro on mac os is great because it's better optimized for all mac computers which is why the export times are normally a little bit faster on mac os with premiere pro but unfortunately for some reason i cannot seem to render my videos as fast as the first time i rendered it it went from 12 minutes to about four and a half huge jump but ever since then i've had trouble even editing videos in mac os it runs fine when it is not using opencl to render but when it uses metal it works a lot slower because opencl works a lot better on nvidia based gpus and actually i can't even open premiere pro and look at a video in mac os when it is using OpenCL for some reason. I have no idea why. I've looked into it. And I can't seem to figure it out. And Metal does not work very well with the MacBook Pro running this eGPU. The render times are extremely long, actually, about 20 to 30 minutes. I'm not sure why that is, but I believe that has something to do with NVIDIA and not really working well with Metal. So there's that. That's a bit of a problem. I'm working on getting that fixed, but it's something to note. If you're using Premiere Pro, it might not work that well. And I don't use Final Cut Pro, so I can't tell you how it works on Final Cut Pro. But Premiere Pro, I have had that problem. It's something that I know I can probably fix because I've had it working before. 
But the thing is with these eGPUs is they're finicky. So one little change here or one update you didn't mean to update here could ruin the whole thing and then you have to re-download this, redo that, redo this, redo that. So there's definitely that problem. On Windows though, I am still getting for a very similar video that exported in about 12 minutes on the MacBook Pro the first time without the eGPU. It renders in about nine or eight minutes on Windows, but I know on Mac OS I can just get it to go a little bit faster, like four or five minutes. That's why I'm a little bit frustrated and I like editing a Mac OS better. I just like the operating system better. That's why I have the MacBook Pro. So there's that problem. I'm having a little bit of trouble with that, but I can still edit my videos in Premiere Pro. So it hasn't been the worst thing ever, but it's certainly a little bit frustrating. And finally, the last negative that I can tell is that you have to have an external monitor and the eGPU runs hot. The external monitor is the best way to get the best performance because it pumps it through the graphics card and it doesn't have to pump it back through the cable so the bandwidth isn't tested there. It just goes through the cable and then it goes through the DisplayPort cable back into the monitor and it works really well. But unfortunately, you won't have the same success running it through the internal display. However, if you choose an eGPU like what I have, the Akitio Node Thunder 3, you're gonna notice a bit of a problem with cooling, especially with the GTX 780. 780 obviously is a power hungry card. The Akitio Note Thunder 3 can power that with no problem, which means it can probably power any graphics card. I don't know if it can power like a Titan, but it can definitely power any consumer grade graphics card, which is great considering the fact that there's like a 400 watt power supply inside of there, it's beefy enough for pretty much any graphics card you could put inside of it. That's really good. But there's one fan cooling the whole thing, intaking air. It's weird. You would think they would have had a two fan setup. There's intake from the front, and then there is what the fans, the GPU fans can shoot it through a grate on the side, but it gets warm. I know it gets really warm too because I've touched it and it's been warm. Also, the cat loves laying on top of it because it's super warm and he likes the heat. So you need to keep that in mind. That eGPU doesn't cool that great. I haven't really noticed any thermal throttling per se, but it gets really warm, especially using a 7 Series graphics card like I am using because those run hot as hell. <laughs> so those are my thoughts on an eGPU. So should you buy one? You've stuck around this long. You're like, Scott, just tell me the answer. Yes, you should buy one. If you only want one computer and that one computer is a MacBook Pro and you're not super, super, super concerned with spending a lot of money, but you want to keep it under like 1200 bucks, I would say. I got this whole setup for 900. I would say comfortably it's worth about 1200, which would put you right in that ballpark. The reason I would say it's still a good buy is because there is no Thunderbolt 3 enabled MacBook Pro that you can even buy for 1200 that will get you the same performance as this whole setup. It's just not possible. You could buy a 13 inch MacBook Pro with like an i5 and maybe an i7 inside of it, but those are just dual core processors. And then if you buy an eGPU in the graphics card and you somehow find that for the same price I found this for or under 1200 bucks, it's not gonna have the same performance because there's only two cores. This has four cores, eight threads, much better processor. So I would say it's a <laughs> budget option. I can't I can't confidently say it's really budget, but when talking about Apple products, the budget is different. It's not a Windows budget because Windows budget 180 bucks, you can build a great computer. I've done it before. But with Apple, there's the difference between Apple and Windows where you're willing to spend more for the budget option. This is $900 and I consider it budget. But on the Windows side, if I spend $900, I would expect pretty much not the top end computer, but one of the best computers you could probably build for the most part within reason, obviously. So those are my thoughts on this whole setup. It's crazy. It's a weird thing. It's cool. I think it's the thing I like about it the most is that I feel like I'm like a pioneer per se on this whole front of eGPUs. I think eGPUs in the future, if they can get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, they're going to be even more and more valuable, especially with Thunderbolt 3 and maybe even with Thunderbolt 4 if it's in the same form factor because you can just get so much more performance for not that much money. I mean, when you're talking about a Thunderbolt 3 enabled computer, you're already talking about at least a $1,000 computer, correct? So when you add an eGPU for another, in my case, 300 bucks, it's actually not that much money to get a lot more performance. Granted, if you're in a place where eGPUs are still like a thousand bucks, it makes no sense. But if you can find it for a similar price to what I found it for, if you want a similar setup, I would say try to find it all for about $1,200. I think that's a comfortable range, then go for it. It's a great setup. It's by no means budget, but I definitely think it's cool. It's, it, 
it's not the greatest thing ever. It's not perfect, but I'm super happy about it, and I have no complaints so far. I can imagine in a week or two, I'll be like, this is the dumbest thing ever. I don't know why the hell I did this. <laughs> but for now, I won't be saying that. So this has been Scott with Techno Clips. If you liked the video, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. I want to thank you for 244 subscribers. I lost one today. I found out who it was, and he's been taken care of. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer your questions to the best of my ability. I'm still kind of new to this whole eGPU setup situation. There are so many things to learn about it. It's really fun, actually. So if you have any questions, just drop a comment, and I'll try to answer them as best I can. But I might just direct you to a site where people know much more than I do. So thank you again for watching. All the products I listed will be linked in the description if you want to buy one it's affiliate link so if you want to buy one and it like supports my channel that's fine and if you don't it's no big deal so thank you again for all the support remember live streams are sunday night at 9 p.m and yes i am sunburnt i golfed today and i forgot to put on sunscreen don't forget to put on sunscreen boys and girls because it certainly is not good to get sunburned all right thanks again for watching and peace out